There was a time in ancient Rome when the patricians offered the plebeians to elect their own to a position equal to that of the consul, but the plebeians chose to elect patricians instead. In this video, I tell you how plebeians not trusting themselves led them to not taking much control within the Republic. I welcome you to my YouTube channel where I explore ancient texts. The ancient texts I explore in this channel have existed for thousands of years. At the moment, I'm going through from the founding of the city by Titus Livius or Livy. This is a collection of books that was written about 2000 years ago. It covers the history of Rome from its founding in the 750s BCE to the time when Augustus was emperor which was close to 0 AD. If you have not subscribed, subscribe so that you do not miss any of the videos I publish. The symbol portrayal of the politics of ancient Rome is that the conflict was always between the patrician class and the plebeians. While the patricians did everything to take advantage of the plebeians, the latter were always pushing back and fighting for more rights in the Republic. However, reading Livy's books, it becomes apparent that the plebeians often sabotage themselves or believe that they were not good enough for some political positions or did not deserve some of the rights. That turned out to be the case even when they seemingly put up a strong demand for some of those positions or rights. A case in point is the position of consul. It was a common understanding that the position of consul was a preserve of the patrician class. However, in the 440s BCE, the plebeians started to agitate to be allowed to qualify to hold the office. In the negotiations that followed, it was agreed that a new office known as the Consular Tribune will be created, and some of the powers that consuls exercised will be transferred to that new office. Both plebeians and patricians will qualify to be elected to the office. However, in the following elections, the plebeians did not offer themselves to be elected. And even in the subsequent elections, plebeians preferred electing patricians and not their fellow plebeians. This trend continued and at some point the tribunes of the people started to complain about it. Livy writes, The tribunes of the people reproached the populace for allowing their stupid admiration of those whom they really hated to keep them in perpetual servitude. Not only did they lack the courage to claim their share in the chance of preferment to the consulship, but even in the election of consular tribunes, which was open to both patricians and plebeians. They never thought of their tribunes or their party. Livy states that the tribunes of the people tried to explain how this trend of not electing fellow plebeians was demoralizing to them. They also believed in the long run it would discourage those who had dedicated themselves to fighting for the rights of the people. Livy writes, that any tribune of the plebeians should rush blindly into contests which involve enormous risks and brought no advantage, which he might be certain will make the patrician whom he opposed persecute him with relentless fury, while amongst the plebeians on whose behalf he fought he would not be in the slightest degree more honored, was a thing neither to be expected nor demanded. They told the people that when the plebeians will be respected, every plebeian will respect himself and that it was pointless to fight to secure rights but then fail to exercise them. Livy writes, They saw no reason why a law should not be repealed which simply legalized what will never happen. They will have less to be ashamed of in the injustice of the law than in being passed over in the elections as though unworthy to hold office. However, even after the campaign by the tribunes of the people to sensitize the plebeians, the next elections saw only patricians taking the office of the consular tribune. Livy writes, their authority and interest were not, however, strong enough to prevent the voters from preferring on the ground of their high birth those whose fathers and grandfathers they had seen in the consul's chair. Livy tells us that this outcome infuriated the tribunes of the plebeians. He quotes in particular one Pompilius and one Antistius, both tribunes of the people, stating the following. What is the meaning of this? In spite of our good offices, in spite of the wrongs done by the patricians, with all the freedom you now enjoy of exercising powers you did not possess before, not a single member of the plebeians has been raised to the quantership to say nothing of the consular tribuneship. But this mistrust of the plebeians of their fellow plebeians, and in particular not trusting them to hold high office, was likely a product of propaganda by the patricians. Livy shares a conversation that happened in a meeting of patricians where Appius Claudius shared a tip to the rest regarding tactics for controlling plebeians that had been shared within his family for generations. Livy writes, Appius Claudius, the grandson of the old December and the youngest senator present, rose to speak. He is represented as saying that he was bringing from home 
an old device well known to his house. His grandfather, Appius Claudius, had pointed out to the Senate the only way of breaking down the power of the tribunes, namely through the interposition of their colleagues' veto. Men who had risen from the masses were easily induced to change their opinions by the personal authority of the leaders of the state, if only they were addressed in language suitable to the occasion rather than to the rank of the speaker. Their feelings changed with their fortunes. When they saw that those of their colleagues who were the first to propose any measure took the whole credit of it with the plebs and left no place for them, they would feel no hesitation in coming over to the cause of the Senate and so win the favor not only of the leaders but of the whole order. If you enjoyed this video, take a moment to strike the like button. I also welcome your comments. See you in the next video.